All right, chapter seven. This is a, um, a lesson here on the sine law and the cosine law for chapter seven in Workplace and Apprenticeship 30. And I'm going to combine this whole chapter into one lesson. I'm going to review what uh, right angle trigonometry is. That's something that you took last year. You've taken for years about right angle tri trigonometry. I'm going to introduce something probably brand new to all of you, the sine law and the cosine law. So chapter seven is trigonometry, and it starts off with a review for right angle trigonometry. So what's right angle trigonometry? Well, you may recognize from this right here, sine, cosine, tangent. Do you guys remember using sine, cosine, tangent? We've done that this year even. Um, notice that the sine of an angle equals the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. That is the so in so katoa, right. So so katoa. Now again, this is a review of right angle trigonometry. So what do we mean by that? You can use so katoa, that is the sine cosine tangent ratio um, for a triangle that is a right triangle. It only works for right triangles. So I'll say that again. So ka toa, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, where the ratio equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse or adjacent and hypotenuse, whatever, that only works for right angle triangles. Okay? So if you see a right angle triangle, so ka toa applies. Now, I won't spend too much time on reviewing so ka toa. You could probably do that yourself. But on this next page here, I'll just show you one little question here. So it, for example, question A, this is a right angle triangle. It's got a 90 degree angle in there. That's a right angle. And I'm trying to find out what this side is. And I'm given an angle and I'm given this side length, okay? So um, we know that we could use so katoa, okay? And what we're given is this angle right here. So this side over here is opposite of this angle. And this side is adjacent, okay? It's right beside the angle, but it's not the hypotenuse. Here's the hypotenuse. So we're dealing with the opposite and the adjacent. That is tan. So as a quick review, you're gonna write tan of 67 degrees, so that the sine, the cosine, and the tangent in right angle trigonometry always has to go with an angle. And you would say equals, well, remember this is TOA, that's tan equals opposite divided by adjacent. So opposite is 204.9 and divided by the adjacent, which is the X. So once you set I'm that up. Not, uh, you're not sharing your screen. All right, so this is the equation for the tangent, right? And so I can do cross multiplication and cross multiply and divide, and I'm going to get x up here equals 204.9 divided by tan 67. All right, and I am going to just kind of zip down here, and you can see this is the solution to that example, and we would get an x value of 87. You want to make sure that your calculator is in degrees. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about Sokotoa. Okay, because the lesson today is about the sine law and the cosine law. And that comes into effect when you have, I'm gonna actually go back to the very first page here, that comes into effect when you have a triangle that is not a right triangle. So if you look down here, okay, I have a right triangle right here, A, B, C, but this green triangle is not a right triangle. And you can probably see that this angle, if this was angle B, okay, and this was little side B, and this was little side C, and so on, this angle is different than it was if it was a right triangle. This side length is very different than if it was a right triangle, and so on. And so everything is all messed up a little bit. But the sine still can be used for an angle in a non-right triangle, and that's where the sine law comes in. So, a couple terms. Okay, an oblique triangle is just the fancy name for any triangle that's not a right triangle. Okay, it does not have an angle that has a 90 degree measure, and so it's, an, it's a triangle that's not a 90 degree. All right, now what is the sine law? Okay, so the sine law works for all triangles, even the right angle ones, but we won't talk too much about that because we're going to use Sokotor for all that. But it works for any triangle, and it's very simple. I'm not going to show you how this is proven. Uh, that's for another class another time. You can look that up on your own. So I won't prove this uh, to you, but I will show you how this works. 
So in the sine law, it does not have to be a right triangle, but the sine of an angle, okay, so let's say this is angle A, the sine of angle A and the opposite side to that angle, okay, they are pairs, they're special pairs. And if you have sine A over A, like this as a division, the ratio between the sine of the angle and the opposite side has to equal the ratio of angle B divided by its opposite side. And so the angle and the opposite side are special partners, they're special pairs. And I know this is a weird little thing here because there's three things that are equal, but I'll explain that in a second. So sine C over C, sine C divided by its opposite side, that's a special relationship as well. Okay, so these are related. Okay, so an angle and the side opposite the angle. Those are special partners. Now, how does this work in a real life situation? Well, let's take a look at an example here. So look at example number two, okay? Now this obviously is not a right angle triangle, is it? It's not a right angle triangle because there's no angle that's 90 degrees. But you'll notice that I have a special pair. I have an angle and I have its opposite side. That is awesome. That is the, the beginning of using the sine law and creating an equation. So watch this. I can say that sine of 52 degrees divided by 16.8, that is its opposite side length. That is going to be equal to both of the other pairs, or you can say just one of the other pairs. So I can let two of those things in the original formula there, the original um, statement of the sine law, I can let two of those be equal to each other. So how can I use this right here? Well, I'm going to put the sine of 72 up top divided by A. And I can make a simple proportion in a non-right triangle using the sine ratio. So again, special pairs, the angle and its opposite side. The sine of an angle divided by its opposite side length is equal to the sine of another angle in that triangle divided by its opposite side length. So notice I can pick any two of those ratios that I, that I showed you here. Uh, even though there's three listed right here, sine A over A, sine B over B, sine C over C, even though there's three, you can take any pair of them and make a simple equation. So for example, I just took two of them, let them equal to each other, and now we can solve. So just by regular means, we can solve for A. Do a little cross multiplying so that A goes up there, right? And uh, another cross multiply so that 16.8 goes there. It's not there anymore. And a little dividing, guess what? This sine of 52 can go there. And it's not there anymore. So I have A equals this right here. If you do that on your calculator, and I'll show you just down here is the solution, right? So 16.8 times sine of 72 divided by sine of 52. Your answer on your calculator should be 20.3. So take a moment, please, and make sure that this is working on your calculator, okay? Do sine of 72 times 16.8 divided by sine of 52, and please tell me if you get 20.3. And make sure your calculator is in degrees, okay? In degrees. Okay, so now that we've got that figured out, how do we now, how would I find little c here? Because in this question, I could ask, this one doesn't ask it, but I could ask, what is little c? Oh, what is little c? Well, guess what? We can figure out what little c is using the sine law. I obviously have this special partnership right here. Okay, that's good. I'm going to use that. But I have this C here, but I don't have this angle given. But is there any way I can figure out what this angle C is? Do you remember how to do that? Yeah? Add up the two angles that are given and subtract them from 180. That's right. If you remember that all the angles of a triangle, in any triangle, they all have to add up to 180 degrees. Now I have that, I think, on one of my pages here somewhere as a little bit of a note. I don't know where it is right now, but we'll come across it. So guess what? I'm going to erase this now, and I'm going to show you how we could figure that out. 
So we're going to find C. Well, I know that sine 52 over 16.8 is going to equal the sine of C, and I can figure out what C is. So C equals 180 minus 52 minus 72. That's what C is. So what's that? 124, that's going to be 56. Tell me if I'm right there. Does that sound right? Can someone do that and just double check my math there? 56? Okay. So guess what? I can now solve for C. But let me show you one other simple thing. One other thing that also applies to the sine law. Okay? This is very important. Notice how the C is in the denominator. That's a little, it takes a little extra work to solve for C because I got to move this C around. The sine law also works like this. Watch this. I could write the side length on top and the sine of the angle on the bottom as long as I do that for both of the fractions here, okay? If I flip both of them like that, that's the same, you're gonna get the same answer. So this might be a little simpler. If you write it like this, then guess what? There's only one little step you have to do and boom, you've got C all by itself. So C here equals sine 56 times 16.8 divided by sine 52. So someone figure that out in your calculator. Tell me what you get. You got 17.76. Did anybody else get that answer or a different one? You guys doing this as well? Okay, do this on your calculator. Tell me what you get. Okay, so the answer should be 17.7 um, and it should be centimeters is the uh, unit. Okay. So just to point out, I think this is a good thing to learn. Um, one of you said your answer was 160 something. So what you want to do is you want to double check to make sure that that is realistic. This triangle, right, is pretty close to being drawn to scale, I would say. Uh, although this 52 looks a little bit more than 52, I would say, and this 72 maybe is a little less than 72. So maybe it's not to scale perfectly, okay, but is one, is one of these sides going to be 160 something? No, no, it'll, it'll probably be close to 16 or 17, you see? So then you can just double check that, you know, for reasonability. Is this reasonable answer? And on a test or an assignment, you always should check just to look over quickly to see if that's a reasonable answer that you get. Okay, any questions about the sine law? Because uh, there are some more examples we could do, um, but I want to move to the cosine law here because it's going to take a little bit of work too. So any questions about the sine law? All right, um, we'll probably come back to uh, maybe a question like this or so, but um, as long as you have a pair of an angle in its opposite side anywhere, then you can probably use the sine law, okay? So that is what you're looking for. Um, right here, I have an angle and its opposite side. So as long as you have that special um, pairing, then you can probably use the sine law, okay? So here's another, here's a, uh, a word problem that you can also see there's a triangle. It's not a right triangle. You can use the sine law. All right, the cosine law. All right, the cosine law is, is a little bit more complicated than the sine law, okay? The sine law is pretty easy when it comes to an angle and its opposite side and so on. The cosine law is a special formula, one that you probably will need to work at uh, remembering and using, but this is it right here. So what I'm gonna get you to do is I'm gonna get you to copy this down. Uh, this is the cosine law. Okay, I'll zoom in on that. Please take a moment to write that down. Um, and this second part here, we won't focus on that just yet, but just write this as I've highlighted in yellow. And I'll explain how that works. And you may notice something about this cosine law formula. Um, and I'll ask you that in a second, what you might notice about that. All right, so tell me, tell me what you notice about this formula. Um, and, and one of you already said it here. Uh, you said that it, it, it looks kind of like backwards from the Pythagoras' theorem expression. Well, yeah, that's what I wanted you to notice. I wanted you to notice that this part is pretty close to Pythagorean theorem, okay, to Pythagoras. It's pretty close to a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's not exactly the same, but it does have that characteristic to it. So what we want to notice is that even if this triangle is not a 90 degree, um, uh, not a right triangle, if you could consider a right triangle, okay, that was, here's this right triangle, let's say, with 90 degrees, what if that triangle was 
This 90 degrees was just like 91 degrees. If it was 91 degrees, then the Pythagorean theorem, or, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared, would be really, really close to being true, right? Like super, super close. So there's only a slight adjustment we have to make to the Pythagorean theorem to account for that difference of an angle. And, that, and that's one way I like to look at it. It's almost like Pythagoras, but we have this little extra part that we have to remember. Okay, so here's a triangle down here on the screen, and we have a triangle A, B, C. It's not a right triangle, but there's also a special relationship with the sides and, and, the, and one of the angles that has to do with the cosine ratio, and that's why it's called the cosine law. So A squared, okay, so now watch this. A is one of the sides, okay? If we take one of these sides and we square it, that's going to be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And again, that is very close to Pythagoras. So we've got B squared plus C squared, okay? A squared equals B squared plus C squared. Now, this part here is always a minus right here. Always a minus. It's always two times, and we always multiply that two times this length and this length. So in this case, it's the length of B and C. So these lengths right here on the same side of the equation, that's what you multiply by. And then we also multiply this term right here times the cosine of A, and notice this, that the cosine of the angle we the pick is the angle that's opposite of the little a that we started with on the other side. So there is, again, a special relationship with a side and its opposite angle, or the angle and its opposite side. Still a bit of a special relationship there. Now, let me go over this again. Okay, I'm not going to move to the second kind of version of it here right away, but let me just... Um, okay, le let's just take a look here at this, this one. Look at this triangle. It's a different triangle. So... I notice that I have, oops, what's happening here? That I have an angle here that's given, one angle that's given. Okay, awesome. So that's going to be the angle that I'm going to use in my cosine law. Okay, so it's A. So guess what? I have to start on the other side of the equation, the opposite side of the equation. I have to start with this little side, A. So I'm going to write A squared equals... And at the very end, it's going to be times cos of A at the very end. See the A and the A. Now what goes in here? Well, B squared, and I know what the value of B is. That's going to be 7.9 squared plus C squared is 5.2 squared. Okay, so remember A, B, and C. And then I always do a minus. I always do a two times. And then these numbers here, which is going to be pretty, going to be pretty tight, but it's going to be these numbers that I've used. So 7.9 and 5.2. Okay. So you just kind of have to remember that the the relationship of the sides and the angles that you put into the formula. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cos of a. So that's the relationship no matter which way that triangle is turned. Okay. Oh, and a, uh, sorry, I should uh, put in a here. We know that is 43. 43. So, uh, whoops, in black, let's do that. So get your calculator out, and I want you to solve for a for me. Solve for A. Okay. Take a moment and do that and see if you can figure out what A is. Okay. So the answer to this is should be about 5.4 centimeters. So some of you got that. Got that. Okay. So some of you did not take the square root. I did that before I got the square root. Okay. Well, you did something wrong. Yeah, it's okay. You did something wrong. All right. So... Make sure that you can get this answer, something close to this, by doing this on your calculator. Again, you know, how you type it in is important. Sometimes that's, you're missing a bracket or you, you know what I mean? Notice that this right here, these are all multiplied together, okay? And you're subtracting this whole unit, right? this whole thing right here from 
this plus this, okay? Uh, that's gonna be important. So you should get about 5.4. Any questions on that? I know some of you are redoing your calculations, so take a moment to redo that if you need to. All right, so moving on here, when do we use the cosine, the cosine law? You use the cosine law when there's two cases where you would use it. The first case is the one that we've studied here. That's not for those, is it? Is the one that we've studied where we have a, now no, okay, just notice this. See, I have an angle, but I do not have the opposite side anywhere. That, that's not a, it's not the case anywhere. I cannot use the sine law, probably gonna be able to use the cosine law, okay? Now, what is this situation? Well, this situation is here where I have a side with an angle in the middle of the other side that's given. So when you have side, angle, side, side, angle, side, when you have that situation, you have a side, another side, and then the angle in between, when you have that, you can use cosine law to find this side over here. So side, angle, side, you can, you can always do it then. And again, when you try and use the sine law here, if you tried to use the sine law, you would do something like this, maybe like, okay, sine 61 over R equals, uh, and you're like, oh boy, I don't have P or Q. Uh, how do I, because I, I can't, uh, sine 61. Um, then you have two things missing. You have like, I could do 4.3, and then I have sine of Q. Well, that doesn't work because this is unknown, and this is unknown, so you can't solve. You, you can only have one unknown thing in an equation to solve for it. Right? So this sine law does not work. Cosine law would work. Now, how would I set this up? Well, guess what? I am going to do this. I'm going to, I see that my angle here is 61. So at the end, that's going to be cos 61. That means on the opposite side of the equation, I have the opposite side here. So this is going to be r squared. See that? Okay. r squared. And then the angle is at the other end. So they're on the opposite sides of the equation. They're opposite of each other. And then I simply fill in the rest. 4.3 squared plus 6.5 squared. That's my a squared plus b squared. Always a minus. Always a 2. And then multiply by the numbers that you wrote down right here and here. 4.3 and 6.5. See that? Now you've completed that. And if you take the square root of both sides, that's what r is going to equal. So it looks pretty confusing, but if you just take it a piece at a time and keep in mind the cosine law and how it's written out, then you can just plug in your values, okay? And uh, of course, uh, you can find out what R is here, and let's do that. All right, so you should have something like, here's the uh, worked out solution here from the solution manual. You should have something about 5.8, okay? I see some thumbs up and some nods. How are we doing? Yes, you got that one. Great. Okay, good. So that's one case where you would use the sine law when you have side, angle, side. Okay. Um, another case would be, and uh, so oh, here's another example. See that we have side, angle, <coughs> side. So that would be a good candidate. The other case would be, where is it? Uh, right here. This would be another case where you could use the cosine law. And I thought I, okay. So if you have side, 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 if you have three sides given with zero angles given, you can use the cosine law. And this is the final part of this little lesson video. And uh, if you have side, 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 you can find an angle um, using the cosine law. Now, it gets a little bit, the formula for that one's a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna show you how we can get to the formula for finding an angle from the original. So watch this. Let's find out uh, Z. Okay, so it's gonna be, um, so Z is what uh, we're trying to find. That's gonna be cos of Z on the other side. So it's gonna be Z squared, right? Equals, what's the sides that are next to Z? It's going to be what? It's going to be 8.2 squared plus 12.3 squared minus 2 times 8.2 times 12.3. Now, we also are given little z over here. So guess what? I don't have two things that I'm missing. I only have one. OK? 
because this little z over here, I actually am going to be able to write that in. You bet. You have to square it. That's right. So do you see, this is how you can solve for z here. You can set up the cosine law, and the missing piece is not on the left side of the equation. No, the missing piece is over here. Now, the small problem, <laughs> or the tricky part, is how do you get, how do you isolate this? Like, how, how do we do this? Well, I'll show you how we do it, and then you can write this down in your cue sheet if you want, and you don't have to worry about doing this every time. You can just kind of remember what the formula is. But it goes like this. Let's subtract, we want to get everything else over here, all of this stuff, over to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 8.2 squared, right? Oh, okay, so I'm going to have 5.1 squared minus 8.2 squared. I'm also going to subtract 12.3 squared. You see that? So on this left side, I'm going to have minus 12.3 squared. Okay. Now, this over here is, this is tricky because all of this is multiplied together. So right now what I have is this. And I'm just going to do this in pieces for you so that you can hopefully see what's going on here. So is everyone, is everyone okay with what I've done so far, just taking these terms over to the other side? Okay. Now, even though this looks like a subtraction, it's not actually a subtraction. We cannot add anything to both sides here. But what we have to understand is that these are all multiplied to this cosine of z. Okay. So that means I have to divide this. Can't you picture all of our balance? So minus two, so divided by negative two times this 8.2 times this 12.3. And that will, in effect, isolate cos of z. Now we're almost done. <laughs> now we're almost done. So let me just clean this up a little bit. So that's gone. This is gone. And I've got cos of z here. Okay. Now, how do you find, how do you solve for z here? Do you remember how you kind of separate the trig function and the angle in there? How do I, how do I get z all by itself? Anyone remember? Uh, tan inverse. Uh, inverse, right, except not tan, not tan uh, inverse. Uh, it's going to be inverse, inverse cos. Very good, very good, yes. So the second function of cos on your calculator, you're going to do that to both sides and that's going to get rid of the cos here. Very good, yes. So that's a little bit complicated, isn't it? But I personally like to start off with the cosine law because I can remember that and then if I move those things over and then I write it like this, I will, I will hardly ever make a mistake. So this is how I would suggest you do it. So please do this on your calculator and uh, tell me what answer you get for the angle of z, and it's of course going to be an angle in degrees, and it's going to be pretty small if this is drawn to scale at all, right? It's going to be probably 15 or so, right? It's going to be something really small, so anticipate a smaller angle. So I'll let you work on that for a minute. All right, great, Twelve. It's a degree. Y yes, it's in degrees. The angle measure is going to be in degrees because, again, this is a we're up here. For the angle. We're, we're looking for the angle. That's right, not the distances here. Okay, so. <laughs> This is a big, this is kind of a big mess here, right? But you can do this on your calculator. I would probably suggest, right? You see what they did here? I assume that Bob wrote the same. Lily, you were to fix it? Yeah, that's what I did. Say what? What? I assume that the Bob wrote the same negative 2 and then. Well, it's a negative 2. Yeah, we're not subtracting, it's a negative 2. So, yeah, so, so then really, this should be. Yeah, is there no negative sign there? What's going on? Is it, or is this negative up here? Probably, yeah. That's negative up there. So this is negative up here. So really, there should be a negative 192 over negative 201, probably. Mm -hmm. They just, uh, um, a negative divided by negative positive, yeah. So again, what I would suggest is to do this top part, find an answer, write that down. So just write a couple steps of work. Just because if you do it all in your calculator all at once, you know what I mean? Like the order of operations, you miss a bracket, you get the wrong answer, you don't know why. So just take a few extra seconds. Calculate this top part, so this part right here. Write the answer down, which I think should be negative 192.52. And then do this one underneath, and that one should be negative 201.72. And then do the inverse cos of that 
ratio or the answer, and you should get about 17, close to 17. Rounded to the nearest degree would be 17 degrees, okay? Now, um, I will point out that if you want to start with this course sort of equation, that's totally fine. And I'm going to go back to the cosine law, the very first page, and you'll notice I didn't really highlight this at the beginning, but watch, right here. So if you, you want to find the angle, this is how it's sort of arranged, okay? And um, what I don't like, okay, what I don't like right here, I'll show you, is that, <laughs> oh, that's, that's too bad. See, I don't like what they've done. They've not included the negative here, um, and they switched all the signs of A, B, and C, oh, which I hate. Oh, I hate that. Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh, I hate that. I hate it. Okay. So don't, oh, why did they do that? Anyways, um, that's why this is not negatives. They're not showing the negatives. Boo, boo, boo. Okay. But anyways, I would start from the cosine law and then just kind of like move the numbers over, divide, and then inverse cos. Okay. I would tend to do that every time. Although, if on an assignment or a a test if on your cue card if you're allowed one right then you can write this down and that totally works too that's just got this it's, it's not dealing with as many negative signs but uh, but you know um, that's gonna work too okay so that's the sine law and the cosine law that's the lesson that's that's the whole chapter right there in one lesson do any of you have any questions about the sine and cosine law because I think I've hit all the major aspects there Okay, let me, yes, in a second. I just thought of something when you said that. Please remember that all the angles of a triangle add up to 180. That's very important. Please remember that on a right triangle is the only time you use Sokotoa, and on a right triangle is the only time you use Pythagoras, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If it's a non-right triangle, you can either use the sine law to solve for an unknown part or the cosine law, and that's what we've learned today. So I'll get to your question now in a second here. All right, so we are going to do a couple questions uh, uh, from the workbook, but I'm going to start a new video for that. So that's your lesson on sine and cosine law. And uh, yeah, check out another video where I do some more examples of sine and cosine law. Improve your life by going to mrmathwell.com. All of your fears will melt away.